Another way to develop writing prompts is using the raft strategy. Select a role, audience, format, and topic for your students to write to. So for example, as a part of a lesson on sportsmanship, physical education teacher Matt Thompson asked his students to respond to the following. Your role is the bronze medal winner. Your audience is the gold medal winner. Your format is a greeting card. And your topic is congratulations on your victory. So if I'm giving this assignment to kids, I'm asking them to put themselves in the shoes of a bronze medal winner and write a congratulatory card to the gold medal winner. It's gonna give you some idea of how well kids grasp perspective. And certainly for the purposes of Mr. Thompson, gives him some evaluation of their understanding of sportsmanship. In addition to being able to write prompts we using the raft strategy, we can also unpack prompts or help kids analyze prompts using the raft strategy. R stands for role. From what perspective are you writing? Do you get to be yourself? Are you a news reporter? Are you the president? Who are you as you're writing? What perspective are you writing from? Then you have the A for audience. Who's going to read your writing? Kids really wanna put teacher here, but we really wanna get kids away from just writing for their teacher and choosing a different audience. Sometimes the prompt itself will tell you who you are writing to. Other times you're going to have to kind of figure that out. We'll show you some examples here in just a minute. But that audience piece is really important because I know that if I'm writing an email to my boss, it looks very different than an email I write to my friends. That same kind of relationship happens with kids. If they're writing to their teacher, it's going to have a little different feel than if it's going to be go in the school newspaper and all of their peers are going to read it. So have that conversation about audience with your students. The F stands for format. What type of writing are you to do? This could be narrative. This could be um, where they determine the essay whether it's an essay or a book review or what have you. The topic is what your writing should be about. That's the bulk of the prompt. We wanna show kids how to identify that. The S in rafts is strong verb. What is your purpose? Depending on the source that you choose to take this from, strong verb may or may not exist. You can choose to put strong verb in with your format or you can choose to leave it as a separate item teacher discretion as to what you'd like to do, that's up to you. If you choose to include it as a separate uh, item, it is the place where you're talking about your purpose. What is my action as a writer supposed to be? So let's take a look. This first prompt is from Park and it's about Amelia Earhart. You have read three texts describing Amelia Earhart. All three include the claim that Earhart was a brave, courageous person. The three texts are Biography of Amelia Earhart, Earhart's Final Resting Place Believed Found, Amelia Earhart's Life and Disappearance. Consider the argument each author uses to demonstrate Earhart's bravery. Write an essay that analyzes the strength of the arguments about Earhart's bravery in at least two of the texts. Remember to use textual evidence to support your ideas. So if I'm going to start breaking this down and talking about the role, audience, format, topic, and strong verb in this this prompt, I'm going to start with my role. Now I told you we want kids to get away from using audience, uh, using teacher as their audience all the time. We also want them to get away from using myself as the role all of the time. So the role for this particular uh, prompt, I would say is someone who has read these articles about Amelia Earhart or someone who knows something about Amelia Earhart because we want to get away from just choosing myself as the role. Then we get into audience, again steering away from teacher as the audience. The person who's going to read this is going to be someone interested in Amelia Earhart, someone who wants to know about Amelia Earhart. Then we go to format. If I'm putting my strong verb and my format together, I'm going to choose an analytical essay or an essay that analyzes because that's my format. My job is to write an essay. That essay has to analyze. So if I'm putting strong verb and format together, I might say analytical essay. If I'm pulling those apart, my format would be essay and my strong verb would be to analyze. That's my purpose as the author of this piece is to analyze. The T is my topic. 
We want to make sure that kids understand the full topic that appears in the prompt. So I would have them start where it says write an essay and read the full sentence. Write an essay that analyzes the strength of the arguments about Earhart's bravery in at least two of the texts. We don't want kids to shorten that and get too concise because what they'll do is they'll say that they're writing an essay that analyzes Earhart's bravery and they'll miss that piece about the strength of the argument. So we wanna make sure that they include all of that information in their topic. This particular prompt is about Abraham Lincoln. As Abraham Lincoln became the president of the United States, write a narrative in which you retell the text from the viewpoint of Mrs. Crawford. What would Mrs. Crawford say about knowing President Lincoln as a young boy? Use details from the passage to help you write your story. Make certain to use narrative techniques such as dialogue, description, and pacing to develop experiences and events. This time, um, our information is a little bit more explicit. My role in this particular prompt is, I am Mrs. Crawford. Who is my audience? Again, we do not want students to write down that the audience is the teacher. In this particular prompt, the audience may be someone who wants to know about President Lincoln as a young boy. As we go through and we read um, our format, it tells us to write a narrative. So again, students know that when they start writing this and when they start thinking about how they're going to organize this particular writing piece, that it must be in narrative format. And my topic then, it tells me, it says, what would Mrs. Crawford say about knowing President Lincoln as a young boy? So my topic is to look back up where it says to retell the text from the viewpoint of Mrs. Crawford. So I'm going to retell about President Lincoln as a young boy. And if we're looking at our strong verb there then, um, we've got that strong verb of retell. Students then have this broken down. So they are Mrs. Crawford writing about President Lincoln as a young boy. They are going to write a narrative that retells about President Lincoln. You can also have them add in there to use details from the passage to help them write their story. Um, whatever clues your students are going to need to help them analyze that prompt. What I would do with students is, <clears throat> for this strategy of, of raft, is just give them a variety of prompts. They're not going to write to any of the prompts, but give them six or seven prompts, have them unpack them using that raft strategy. Every time they have a writing assignment, the very first thing they write down is raft. After they have unpacked that standard using raft, then they can begin their brainstorming using a graphic organizer or an outline or however they want to use that. If you do it each time a student writes, is it becomes automatic. And the student will know that when I read a prompt, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to raft it, I'm going to unpack it so that I know specifically what this prompt is asking me to do. Notice also that this said a narrative or it may say an argument or an opinion. Make sure that students know that vocabulary that is going to come into those prompts. Your students may be able to write an awesome story. But if they read this prompt and it tells them to write a narrative and they do not know that a narrative might be a story, they are going to have no clue as to what to do to answer this prompt. So make sure we are using that academic vocabulary within our instruction and that students know this information. Again, to kind of wrap up what we talked about today, thinking back to what students must be able to do in order to respond to a passage-based writing prompt, we talked about that they need to know how to read that they have to be able to comprehend what was read. Kristen talked to you about the importance of fluency and um, how students need to be able to need to be fluent with their reading in order to aid in comprehension. We talked about summarizing and gave you some strategies for summarizing. We talked about paraphrasing, lots of teacher model with paraphrasing. And we talked about organizing their ideas using a graphic organizer or an outline writing in complete sentences, understanding paragraph structure, and citing textual evidence. Some resources that we use today and some resources that you can use in planning lessons for your students, uh, readworks.org um, has passages for K through eighth grade, um, lots of nonfiction passages on there that you can use. NewsELA.com I know is one that Josh has shared with us before and it will give you current 
articles at a variety of reading levels. Six-way paragraphs, if you go to Amazon, those are there's a series of books with the six-way paragraphs that can give you excellent information. KellyGallagher.org, if you go to that site and go to the resources tab, he has his articles of the week some instructional strategies that we use today, Max Teaching Strategies. We use some things from ReadWriteThink.org, Keys to Literacy, and that LiteracyDesignCollaborative.org, which is where those prompt structures were at. Thank you for joining us in this series. My name is Kelly Angeli. We really appreciate the opportunity to share some things with you today. Again, my name is Kristen Jones. Hopefully you will continue writing with your students and be able to employ some of these strategies in your classroom. Thanks.